Welcome to this video about my bow pipe dream. I built pipe dream out of a steel cooling tower from a Welsh hospital um, some years ago. Got it delivered on a big low loader as a bunch of tubes and um, unloaded them and then immediately started to wonder what on earth I'd gone and got myself into. Being young and resilient at the time I just uh, knuckled down into the work, figured out how to cut things, figured out how to weld things and set my plans up and within about a year I had her ready to go on the river and about another year she was ready to become a trimaran and go out to London and then out to sea and sail. Now several years later I'm trying to um, conclude a, a bit of a refit and get her ready for a much bigger trip. I hope to do one day in the future when time and money finally allows me to do the things that I want to do on this wonderful planet Earth. So this video picks up from the last one where I'd fitted the keel and got her ready for a big test. So I went across and um, waited for a good weather window and then got it on the tractor and got her put in the water. The test here is really what I do is I run up and down the river, both up river and down river. Um, at various engine RPMs recording the GPS speed. I've got two GPSs just to make sure I get a reasonable average between the two and a fairly accurate number to run from. I've built up a lot of test data over the years so I can really track whether certain improvements I've done have worked well or actually not improved things at all. So the results I had were quite interesting. You might have expected that adding a four and a half meter long keel that added about uh, 600 kilograms of buoyancy to the boat and had a, another two and a half meters squared of wetted surface area might slow the boat down. But in actual fact, um, it made negligible difference on the boat's speed. I mean, it's very hard to measure it, but it was in the terms of 0 0.1 knot, 0 0.2 knots, so on the verge of what I could measure with all the data and the equipment that I have. Now, I had hoped for a bit more of a speed increase than that, and the reason was was because the keel added a stabilizing factor to the water underneath the boat. Um, it brought the waves in closer to the main hull, and it's also, I hoped that it was going to reduce a low pressure area between the bow and the keel. Basically, where the bow drops down in the water and, and the angle flattens off, um, I can imagine there's a low pressure area there and that's what's contributing towards my bow drop. My hope was that the keel would overcome that low pressure area but when I was designing the keel I knew that perhaps I'd need something a bit more so I'd already got a plan in place for fitting a test V piece underneath that would basically go from the bow all the way to the start of the keel and just bridge that gap. Um, the test results that I had on this trip really showed that it would be wise perhaps to implement that idea and see if it improved things further. A couple of months later I returned to France and I built this test V piece and I took her for another test. Uh, one of the things I really wanted to do was make sure that it would still fit on the tractor properly um, at the boat yard and also help give that sort of stability to the boat when she's on the tractor because the problem with trimaran on a tractor like that is it's held in place by friction and stopped from tipping either one side or the other really by the friction of the you know the sponge on the hull but the v-piece locked into the v-piece on the tractor quite nicely and gave that extra bit of uh, stability so I could not worry so much when every time the boat went over a bump and shifted slightly on the trailer the results of that test showed that the V-piece had indeed improved performance. Um, not much, but uh, it also improved the way the waves uh, acted between the hulls. So it went on the job list for the next trip. So the next job was to get back to the UK and build the keels in the garage. So again, I used a NACA 0010 template um, to try and get that relatively sort of... Uh, hydrodynamic shape. Um, I tried to make them as light as possible um, but I tried to also get a reasonable bit of displacement in them. Uh, they don't displace much, I mean I think it's about 75 kg each um, but they're probably you know, 
by the time you've taken the weight off there, they're probably adding about 100 kg overall to the buoyancy on the boat, which is a good thing. Along with the V-piece, that means that I'm going to have another sort of oh, 150-200 kg of buoyancy um, when I test the boat next. So that one of the other main purposes of having the outrigger keels is so that when I dry her out in between tides, that is, take her up to a slipway or something and let the tide go out, that the boat won't actually lean over at a big angle. And I've used drying out um, as a method to do work in between tides um, quite a few times, and I've changed out rigger ends on her. I've um, changed stern drives occasionally. Occasionally I've done big modifications underneath and literally found myself having to weld up that last piece as the tide was lapping up my feet and <laughs> coming up the, the side of the boat. Um, it's a useful way to quickly get some work done. Um, with, you know, if you haven't got access to, um, you know, boat yards and getting her out of the water. With keels done, it was time to load them up into the trailer along with the bits of the V-piece and head to France. This was one of the most challenging trips I've had in a long time. It rained absolutely every day. Um, sometimes the rain was so heavy that <laughs> you'd walk outside for 10 seconds and you just come in and you'd just be absolutely drenched. It was terrible. I had to weld underneath the covers all the time, um, keep all my tools as dry as I possibly could. I had so many electric shocks from the welder end and the plasma cutter and it was a battle against adversity the entire trip. But I managed to get the um, skegs welded on to a really good standard. I welded in the V-piece which involved cutting out a bit of the floor, so again I found myself a couple of holes in the floor that I seemed to manage to fall through every night with surprising um, regularity. Um, but then it came time to finish up and paint, and the rain carried on to the very last minute. I literally had to uh, paint in the V-piece in the rain. And when I say rain, it was like torrential rain at the time and I'd, I'd just managed to clear enough of the covers so that the water wasn't running down that bit of the hull and I just had to dry it as quickly as I could, get the paint on and um, hope that it went off. And it did, it did actually go off quite well in the end. It's not the best way of working but if I had not put any paint on at all then I would have come back two months later to find everything rusty. So sometimes you just have to make best of what you've got and just uh, get on with it.